church today I say goodbye to my friend Winston as I stand here and reflect on our journey as friends my heart swells with sadness but is comforted with joy knowing he enjoyed life and is now at peace I met Winston in 2000 at Warren's polyclinic he had just returned from BCC and straight off we became friends he sat at the front of the office whilst I sat in the back. He would always have to look back to talk, but it didn't take long before he too had a back seat. We would talk about work, family, issues of the day, and made many light jokes. Winston was the type of friend that held you in conversation. He was strong-headed, and if you believed in something, give up because he was not backing down. His conversations were engaging and always found a way to see the latest side of things. Never got angry, never swore. We did some fun things as friends. I remember one day going to eat lunch in the old super center and hear him saying, man, Jordan, when I eat these rotis, I just drop sleep. We went there for lunch one day and believe it or not, as soon as we were done, we both felt sleepy. We decided never again. Can't trust in Chinese. <laughs> we would work together on, to solve problems in our districts, and he would bounce off many ideas of his planned projects. These stories would end. These these stories would end our work their conversations, as I would normally take him home most evenings. If Winston was your friend, he appreciated you. Never forgot a birthday or a Christmas. He was ambitious and always dreamed of being a principal, and I was so proud when his dream finally came true. He loved music, and back in the day would make CDs for me, but he always went an extra as he thought he was the king of mixing. Nevertheless, I thoroughly enjoyed them all. To this day, I still listen to those sweet tunes. I can honestly say I gave Winston his first gigs as he played at every house party that I had at my home, and he and my children would have a ball. Christmas was one of his favorite times of the year. We would go shopping, because Winston always had to get new colognes, and of course, a new pair of shades. The man had a pair of shades for every occasion. Christmas by others, he would come, he would come by me, and have some of my wife's turkey and cake. That was our tradition. My proudest memory of Vincent is when he called and said, and say, Jordan, I get him married. I ready and I want you to be my best man. I was so happy for my friend, as he always wanted to settle down and start a family. Winston was a giving, honest, and respectable guy. He will be missed. One could never not appreciate him for who he was. Rest in peace, my friend and rise in glory. Thank you, church.
Good morning, everyone. This is a tribute um, by Nicole Allen. She's not here with us. She's not physically in the island, but I'll be reading it on her behalf. Winston Warren Terrell, a.k.a. John Blaze Terrell. I met Winston at Barbados Community College. I was failing math and he was passing. We became friends over math. The rest is history. Over the years, he was my source of laughter. I remember the year his dad died, and I said, Winston, come up with me and take a break. I could hear him, uh, I'll think about it. But then he said yes, so he came. My mom had these life-size dolls older than Winston and I put together, and they sat in chairs in the living room. When he saw them, he said, um, you realize these dolls missing limbs? I said, Winston, the dolls have diabetes. Amputation is normal. Winston turned and said, so is throwing them away. I said, but Winston, them is mommy dolls. Left them. I had to go, so I left him inside the house by himself. And when I returned, I saw him sitting outside. I thought something was wrong. Winston turned and told me, Joanne, I swear them dolls was looking at me everywhere I went when I get up. So I tell myself, it's them or me, and I come outside. I couldn't stop laughing. Winston was a true friend. We would talk, no, sorry, he would talk, and I would laugh for hours. He was dependable, he was caring. He hated seeing people being taken advantage of. Sometimes I felt mom should have named him Honest because he was brutally honest but kind with it. He had a way of setting light in a dark, dull space. He would walk into a room and people would sit up and wait for him to just say one word. Many times he didn't have to because his facial expression said it all. He would bite on his bottom lip and then turn his head and roll his eyes and laugh. That laugh I will miss. It was contagious like his personality. I recall just waiting with bated breath just to go on Facebook to see his post. He called himself John Blaze. Somewhere along the line, reality or common sense kicked in and he changed it to Vincent Terrell. He was inclusive. He would call me and say, Joanne, you got to meet this person or that person. I would be like, why? Vincent would say, all right, okay, you ain't got to meet them. I done tell them to call you. I could call him and say, Vincent, I need and he would say, Joanne, I on it. What is you want done? That was my buddy, Winston Warren Terrell. I would message him and spell out his entire name, and he would say, why? I would just say, because, and he would laugh. It was done, no questions asked. He had the capacity to make you see a situation in a different light. Even when he knew what he was saying didn't make sense. I remember one day we were talking about traveling, and he said he had never left Barbados. I was like, what do you mean you never left Barbados? He was like, well, you would need a passport to do so, plus, and that was one of his favorite words, he said, I don't ever want to travel. I only want to go to Pelican Island. Well, I don't have to tell you my response. Needless to say, a couple of weeks later, he called to say that he got into a university in the UK, and he wouldn't be going to Pelican Island after all. On many of our calls, he would start would you believe or mind you, I ain't got to tell you, at which point the conversation was one-sided from then on, because all I could do was laugh. Today I say goodbye to a dear friend who lived his life to the fullest. His main role was to bring life, love, and laughter to all he encountered. It didn't matter who you were or what you did, if Vincent could help you, he would give his last to ensure that you were comfortable. He was a believer. Many times we would pray together. I would send him a whole list of things to listen to. When I asked him, Winston, you listen to my messages? He would always say, I listen to this one, but that one too long. I'm going to have to listen to it this weekend when I press in. Over the years, I just learned to press in and waited for him to give me his response. I treasured the long nights, the laughs, the love. But most of all, your compassion will forever be etched in my mind until we meet again. Sleep in peace, my friend.
Good morning. Congregation, kindly stand with me, please. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If they were not so, I would have told you, I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come. He continued, this is Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Who then shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, and all of these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, my God, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come neither height or depth nor any other creator creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord our savior so dearly beloved, today we are gathered here to pay our final tribute of respect to that which was mortal, our deceased loved one, and of course, a dear friend. To you members of the family who mourn your loss, we especially offer to you our deepest and sincere sympathy. We may share with you the comfort afforded by God, our Lord, through his word. And God has already made provision for such a time as this. Indeed, it's a difficult time. And we appreciate that. But I encourage you today with these words, that God is your strength. That God is a present help in the time of trouble. Join with us as we sing the hymn, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. It save a wretch like us. We confess that we once were lost, but now we are found. We were blind, but thank God today we have sight in Jesus' name.
Let us pray. Eternal God, our kind Heavenly Father, at this very moment, O oh God, our hearts, God, we look to you. We look to you, O oh God, as the one who gives all comfort. And Father, th today we want to give you thanks, O oh God, for the life that has departed. Father, it was your breath. Dear God, it was your choice to take that breath unto yourself. It's left, O oh God, up to us today to return thanks to you and to consider, O oh God, for ourselves, what will we do with the breath that you have given unto us? But in this thanksgiving service, O oh God, we take this opportunity, dear God, to bless your wonderful name. And to think of all of the good things, O oh God, that your son Jesus Christ brought to earth. We remember, O oh God, that Jesus was present, O oh God, at several funerals. He was present, O oh God, at the grave site. He was present, dear God, in the procession. Outside of the tomb of Lazarus, he was there. It was at that point, O oh God, that he declared to the world that he is, as he said, I am the resurrection. I am the life, O oh God. And today, God, our focus go to you, Jesus. You are the author. You are the finisher of our faith and our lives. At this very moment, O oh God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will pay special visitation, O oh God, to everyone in this audience today. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we will be mindful, O oh God, that we too shall pass this way. But right now, dear God, May you, dear God, receive and inhabit the praises of your people for your goodness, for the life that you have given unto us. And as we shall go through this service, may we reflect, O oh God, of our purpose here on earth. And help us to remember that we are here on earth to worship you. And that there is coming a day when the trump of the Lord shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise to meet Jesus Christ in the air. And as you have given us, O oh God, a comforting, comforting words, and you said, remember that I am coming again. So comfort one another with this saying, Jesus Christ is coming again. Let your blessings, O oh God, be upon this audience. As we give ear, O oh Father, to the voice of your Holy Spirit, who brings conviction to us, who gives us the opportunity, O oh God, to develop a relationship with you. Father, this is your time. And may this service, O oh God, give you honor, glory. May our attitude will be one of respect and honor towards you because you are the most high God and no one supersedes you. Thank you, O oh God, for your presence and thank you for what you're going to do here today. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. And let the congregation respond by saying, Amen. Amen. Thanks be unto Almighty God. God is faithful. We say today, great is his faithfulness. Through in this service, we're going to ask all of you who are going to participate with your tributes, whether in song or scripture reading, we're going to ask you to kindly follow the bulletin. There will be no announcement to call you to platform, so I'm going to kindly ask you to position yourself and follow on accordingly. Great is thy faithfulness. Could we remain standing as we do this wonderful hymn? Come on. This is the God. We salute him today. And we, want, we don't mind giving a sacrifice to stand and say, God, I salute you today. God, I recognize that you, God, are faithful, even when we are not faithful. So sing with us today, great is thy faithfulness.
There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changes not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning. The Bible reading is taken from Psalms. The 
Bible reading is taken from Psalms 46, verses 1 to 6. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not be fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Through the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Sila, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her at that right early. The heavens raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you. It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Why'd you have to leave so soon, yeah? Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you Without feeling much worse I know you're in a better place But it's always gonna hurt Carry on Give me all the strength I need To carry It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you Feeling so cold I'll be waiting right here for you Till the day you're home Carry on Give me all the strength I need To carry on So let the light guide your way Yeah It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began
Good morning to all. I am truly humbled to be given the honor to eulogize my lifetime friend, Winston. The death of a friend is equivalent to the loss of a limb. I can speak about Winston the entire day, but I know I have to give you a summary here. It is my joy to take you through my friend's journey here on Earth. Everyone here has encountered Winston on his journey, and he has made an impact on each one of us. Winston Warren Terrell was born to Brenda Terrell and Keith Maloney on November 23, 1975. Born to amuse, to inspire, to delight. Winston was special, all in his own right. His early years were marked by his love for his late grandmother, Hilda, and his attempts at helping her to do her washing. Winston first attended Eden Lodge Primary School, where he made many friends and shared his amazing personality with them. He was an eager learner. He went on to Ellerslie Secondary School and then Barbados Community College, where he studied to become an environmental health officer. I remember when Winston told me he was going to England to complete a master's program. Winston was taking a brave and bold step. He was stepping outside of his comfort zone here in Barbados. Winston enjoyed his time at Leeds, gaining a master's in sustainable waste management. Winston had a passion for knowledge, and he never failed to seek out knowledge to help him to do better. Winston worked with the Ministry of Health for 25 years plus, moving up the ranks to senior environmental health officer, and eventually becoming the principal environmental health officer at the Maurice Bayer Polyclinic in St. Peter. He gave up his best and made his mark in the environmental health sector. Winston has made his mother proud. He was mostly ob obedient. Brenda was a strict mother, and this is a testament to her love for her son. He seldom veered away from her instruction. He was the kind of child any parent would be happy to have raised. Winston and his aunt Cynthia were very close. She would do anything to help Winston achieve his goals. Cynthia saw Winston as more of a brother than a nephew. Theirs was a close and special relationship. He was her pookie. She gave him this nickname as a young child. This endearing name gives an idea into how cute he was in those years. Close family members would still to this day use that endearing nickname. He was his Auntie Eunice's favorite nephew. Mind you, he, was, he is her only nephew. She loved her nephew dearly and showered him with love at every opportunity she got. Winston's little sister, Pamela, remembers the times when he was her protector, a playmate, and a challenger. Pamela remembers his DJ skills started in the neighborhood with sound clashes against her and other neighbors. He won most of the time because he always had the latest reggae rhythms and popular songs. He would blast his music constantly for hours on weekends. She remembers Winston protecting and taking care of her when she experienced her first asthma attack. Pamela spoke about Winston's nature of helping others. She remembered seeing Winston run towards the man who was being attacked to save him. He was always looking out for others. Our childhood homes at 4th Avenue University Drive were a source of joy and fun. Winston and I, along with our cousins and friends, spent many days flying kites, making mud pies, and playing Monopoly on the front step for hours, usually finishing after dark. My childhood memories of Winston and I are so full of joy and fun. We were each other's constant companion as children. When we went to LSD Secondary School together, we went to school together and came home together most evenings. I remembered when we first started LSD. We did not know where to locate the school gap, and we decided that we would catch the school bus and get off with the other students so that we would know the location. One fine morning, when we were at the bus stop waiting, the bus was taking really long, and I told Winston to let us walk until the bus came along. Then we would catch it. We had reached all the way to the Nazarene Church on Black Rock when the bus came. I told Winston I was not bothering to get on the bus. We were almost to school. Winston told me he was catching the bus so that he would know how to find the school gap. I told him to go ahead and I was keeping my bus fare. This story became a contention between Winston and I. I told everyone at home that evening how Winston caught the bus from one bus stop and got off at another. For years, this was my go-to joke to tease him. He would never admit to this. He always said he caught it two bus stops away. 
Note, he was very proud that day that he knew how to find the school gap and I did not. Vista was helpful and reliable. Many people, including myself, can attest to the help Winston provided in times of need. He was loving and caring. Winston lived in a house of females, his mother, aunt, sister, and cousins. He was the protector of that household, and they were his protectors. Winston's household was made of love, and this contributed to the fine man Winston became. Winston's cousin, Shelly Ann, was very dedicated to him during his illness. He could call on her for anything at any hour of the day, and she would accommodate him. Shelly became his psychic and constant assistant. She enjoyed this role. There were many layers of Winston Terrell. He was spooky. He was John Blaze, HDMI. He was a son, a nephew, a nephew, a brother, a cousin, a husband, a stepfather, a godfather, a health inspector, and a friend. He was great at these roles. I think his favorites were godfather and stepfather. He showed his godchildren and Ishmael so much love. Winston loved his wife Shakira and stepson Ishmael with all his heart. He enjoyed being a family man. It was his joy to take care of his family. He enjoyed his role as stepfather to Ishmael. Their male bonding time was important to Winston. Haircuts and man-to-man -man conversations. Winston did not spare any effort when it came to his displays of love and affection for Shakira and Ishmael. He was a creative soul. Winston was an extremely witty and talented guy. Many here can attest to his writing skills. I love to read his posts on Facebook. My favorite series was his top 10 things. I will share two of those top 10 posts. His last one posted last year in November, and one about Facebook blocking his John Blaze HDMI profile. Top 10 top things you may get as Christmas presents this year. One, a COVID kit complete with swabs and hand sanitizer. Two, an authentic Salvation Army bucket. No money inside, we checked. A year supply of the Barbados Today paper. A Jew for disconnection for water and light. A call from a court's rep. A regifted foot spa. People at your house eating up your food. Vaccines from the place that sound like a band house. Printed t-shirts that don't fit, mark Republic of Barbados. A bag of lines from the neighborhood power. Top 10 reasons that they made me use my real name. Was about to find out what the X and X files means. They couldn't put John Blaze on an invoice for any statutory cooperation. Facebook, bad-minded. The Caucasians told on me. So I wouldn't lie about owning a yacht again. So Santa Claus would know if I was naughty or nice. Cause ankle bracelets don't come in my size. And the FBJ needed to be able to track me. Cause no one would believe that is my name. To make it impossible for me to ever collect lotto winnings. Cause of that time I called women females. He was very sharp and witty. Our friend Andre reminded me how great Winston was with his words and how he taught her to have a thick skin and handle anything anyone said to her bravely. No one could plant any negativity in Winston's space. He always had a sharp and cutting comeback. He could not be bullied. He was never one to let anyone pick on him because he looked different or thought differently. He loved the finer things in life and he ensured he treated himself. He loved washes, colognes, and fine clothing. He was always well-dressed and ensured he smelled great, too. He also loved soup. He was given the nickname Soup Man by some of our friends. I believe he would have been happy having soup every day. Many Saturdays were spent at Lisa's house, eating Mrs. Rivera's soup and cuckoo, which she specially prepared for him. He also loved meat rolls from Phillips Bakery. He had proclaimed them the best he has ever had. Winston loved music. There were many times when I would torment him to compile music collections for me. He loved music so much, he even provided DJ services on occasions. When I needed a DJ, I knew who to call. Winston had many layers of friends, and they were all special to him. I am sure all of them have great memories and stories to tell. I did not know all of Winston's friends. As a man like Winston, most likely had more than 300 friends. During his years at Eden Lodge Primary School and LSE Secondary School, he was well-loved and made many friends, too numerous to mention. Winston was a very sociable person and brought laughter to many interactions. All along his journey, he made friends far and wide. 
his friends from his time at Leeds University, his friends in the various polyclinics around Barbados, his team at the Mars Bayer Polyclinic. He was an integral, integral part of my Ellerslie Old Scholars Group, a three chat, 40 plus virtual club. We will miss him dearly, corny jokes and out of the box arguments. As Winston was on his journey and during his stint of illness, I would check in on him. I told Winston that he could reach out at any time as he was not on his journey alone. His response was, Natalie, you just like being in my business. My response was, I have always been in your business. What would stop me now? I told him, I know more about you than some of my siblings. Winston was like a brother to me. He always made himself available for a short hello or to answer any questions and to offer assistance where he could. Winston Warren Terrell was a warrior. His journey was amazing. He maintained his strong character to the very end. He kept going and pushing, making jokes and plans for the future. Winston's dash through, light, through this life left a blazing trail of light which will live on in all of us with our good memories. Rest easy, my friend. You will always be in my heart. The years are spinning vanity and pride. The reading is taken from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 4. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to plot up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. This is the end of the lesson. and join us as we sing this song at Calvary.
Morning, everyone. I attended Ellerslie School with Winston, and um, at points we were in the same school choir. Today I'm here to sing a little song for his home going, and the loss of a loved one is never an easy thing, so all I can do is say that I hope that some comfort can be found in the words of the song. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart feel lonely? and long for heaven and home when jesus is my portion And I know he watches over. I know he watches me. So I sing because I'm happy. sing because I'm free his eye is on the sparrow and I know So why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart feel lonely? long for heaven and home just remember when Jesus is my portion Me. So I sing because I'm ha happy. Yeah, I sing because.
watches I know he watches I know that he Encouraging. That's how we sum up that song. Very encouraging. It causes us this morning to focus on the faithfulness of God. Can I do something this morning that may be a little out of character? It's not on the bulletin. But I want those, those of you who are here with us today, and you have an appreciation of the goodness of God. I'm going to kindly ask you to stand to your feet. Stand your feet with me right now. Just put your hands together and give God a note of praise. God is good. Amen. And we thank God today. Hallelujah. For the privilege of life. God, thank God today for life, somebody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mark Twain, I believe, is the one who said there are two days that are important to an individual. You may be seated. That's the day we are born and the day that we discover our purpose. How true is that? My Lord. To share the word of God at a funeral is, such a, is a very sensitive thing for a minister. Hearts are breaking. People are troubled. And you can expect some kind of reaction. There, there are several reactions you can get. I remember in our community, our church community, having to minister a man. He got up and he said, I'm talking foolishness. And he walked through the door. He did it on two occasions. He would get two different funerals. <laughs> and he got up and he says, you always talk in foolishness. But this man would walk just about a hundred yards from the church. He would turn around and he'd come right back into the church. Why? He had to face the fact that death my God, is a reality. It is certain for those who will live on. Those who will live before the coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ. But in the experience of our lives, I would want to suggest to you today that it only takes one day, one single day, to change the circumstances of one's life. In that day, it could be a doctor's a call from the, from the doctor giving a report. It could be a telephone making an announcement that you wish you would have never heard. It just takes one single day for someone to make up their mind, someone that you love dearly, or they love you, and they change on you and they walk out on you. Just one day, all of that can happen. The book of Job, chapter 1, details a series of events which gives proof that a person's life can be greatly changed by the events of one day. Separation or loss is never easy. And we can pull from a cloud of witnesses to confirm to us today that this is true. Ask those whose loved ones left them. Ask the people whose heart throb. You know, there's a throb of pain within. Ask them about the absence that they feel from the broken presence. Today we can ask the family of Winston Tyrell, his wife, mother, aunties, siblings, those who know him personally. 
But we can also ask Brother Job as he wrote the scriptures for us. Or we have the record of his scripture. The conclusion, therefore, is this. Separation or loss it is absolutely never easy. It presents a problem. And for every problem, though, I want to remind you that there is a prescription. Today I suggest to you that the presence of the Lord is a prescription for every single problem we will face. In other words, I'm saying to us, we can't get through the difficulties of this life, the perplexities that will come upon us. We can't get through them on our own. We have a God who is standing in the shadows, and because of his love to us, he, ex he shows that love, and he extends that love to us, and he says, I will help you whether we want to acknowledge it or not. But Brother Job exclaimed this when he got into his trouble. He says, man who is born of a woman short of days and they're full of trouble he went on to say like a flower he comes forth he comes forth and then something happens he withers away he withers away like a fleeting shadow he does not endure he's not here forever that's a fact we are not here forever these words are coming from a man who is speaking from his personal experiences. This is a man who God boasted about. God went into the face, or the devil came into the God's face rather. And God boasted about this man, this man Job. God, God says this man is a blameless man. This man is a man who walks uprightly. This is a man who reverences God. This is a man who shuns evil. He sees evil in one area and he will go in the opposite direction. He was a wealthy man, praise God. And, and it did not come. It, this wealth did not come between him and his God. He was classified as the greatest man among all of the people of the East, the Near East End. So God exhibited this man, God lifted up this man and says, Satan, you see this man? There's none like him. There's no one on earth like him. But he still had to go through his trouble. Subsequent to that, <laughs> the discourse God had with the devil. <laughs> My Lord, God says, listen, I'm going to allow you to tamper with this man's circumstances. Everything that could have been shaken was, was shaken. They were shaken in this man's life. Every single thing. So dearly beloved, I sincerely suggest to you that once there is life, <laughs> we will have to face difficult circumstances. In this life, there will be separation. As I said before, there will be loss. At some point, it's going to happen. Don't let us fool ourselves. Those we love will leave. My God. And they will leave at an appointed time. A time when God says, listen, I want you to come home. It is inevitable. We can't escape it. In one day, one single day, this righteous man lost everything. My God. The resources that he had for farming, his farming methods, his oxen, his donkeys were taken, destroyed. He lost food, the means, and the means of sacrifice that he made unto his God. God you, you would take the sheep, the spotless lamb, and you go and you sacrifice that to God. Everything was taken. Fair fell from heaven and wiped out all of Job's sheep. Nothing to sacrifice unto God. He lost his transportation. The Chaldeans formed and they raided against him. The parties came in and they destroyed all of Job's camels. The most telling of all of this was the fact that his children were lost. Oh my God. Destroyed. The servant told of a wind. A desert storm struck the house where they were in. And the house collapsed on Job's children. All ten of them. 
and killed all of them in one day. So you're sitting there and saying, my Lord, this man had an experience. Everything gone in one day. It was at this point where the character of Job was proven. <laughs> and our character will be proven. I love the quote of Martin Luther King as he said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience. But where he stands at the times of challenge and controversy. We have to know where we are standing. But there's something about life that seems to squeeze out of us an attitude, a response. And then we have to ask ourselves, what kind of response am I going to give to this situation? For those of us who know God, we look to him and say, God, I need your help. God, if I don't get your help right now, God, I am going to be in trouble. God. Some run to all kinds of other sources or resources and they appear to get help. But the help is so limited. Oh, share with me today. Remember this. All of our help comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. So have an experience. The increasing intensity of trouble, tragedy and trouble. God, loss and lament. Job responded and now he leaves an example for us to follow. Could we share the example? Job chapter 1 verse 20. He said at this, as the NIV will place it, at this. That's how he began. Whatever this is for us today, the trouble I'm speaking about, the catastrophe that can come our way, whatever it is, God expects us to respond to it. Job took a resolute action. Watch him now. He got up. He tore his robe. He shaved his head. He's going to mourn now. Then he went to his proven resolve. He fell to the ground. And what he did, he worshipped. Hallelujah. That's where a Christian goes. That's where a child of God goes when we have trouble coming in on us like a flood. We say, God, I need to worship you. God, he's God in the good times. He's God in the bad times. Come on now. He's God when it rains. And he's God when the sun is shining. He's God over all situations. Will somebody say, praise God? He is God. Amen. The scripture declares to us, if a man be a worshiper, God hears that man. So Job understood that as he worshiped God, God is going to intervene. God is going to step right into his situation. He identified the problem. He interceded before God and he's waiting for the intervention of God. That is something that we can learn from today his worship was not cosmetic <laughs> his worship was not just a convenience before this before all of this happened Job practiced the presence of the Lord in worship he knew his God and his God knew him dearly beloved relationship with God is the mo is most required in the time of trouble when we get there, God will uphold us when we get there. God will preserve us when we get there. God will sustain us when we get there. My Lord, Job worship. My God. He revealed, my God, himself. He says, God, here I am. God revealed himself to him. And God, he had a knowledge of God. He had a knowledge of who God is because God showed up for him. His understanding helped him to process why it happened. So he, because he received a counsel from God. And his wisdom guided him to make critical assessment of the situation. Something that all of us must do. We must do this from time to time. There must be critical thinking amongst us. I must be sensible. I must separate the urgent from the necessary and follow through. I have to be critical. 
I have to be consequential in my thinking. I must face the consequences of my actions. These have a way, I remind you, of living on forever. So the decisions we made today, I want to remind us that there's always a consequence. Consequences don't die and they are irreversible. It would be wise if we take this moment to assess ourselves as Job did. Here the man now, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord give and the Lord takes away. May the name of the Lord be praised. As he gives, there's a praise. As he takes away, there is a praise. Dearly beloved, my Lord, I'm going to introduce to you four things that we must pay attention to. We, for the first one, we must re review, we must review rather, sorry, our entrance into this world. Review it. <laughs> we come into this world naked as babes. Sure, you never saw a baby dressed. Naked, with nothing, with a fist form, trying desperately to hold on to life. With a scream, grasping for breath, I want to live. That's how we arrive. We arrive with an inclination to worship God, which is our divine purpose. That is how we come into this world. We don't choose our parents. My Lord, even before we were formed in the matrix of the wombs of our parents, our mother rather, God says, I knew you. Come on now. I formed you. Your very frame. I understand that. My God. So when we come, we come with all of this. We come to life with the power of choice. In response, we choose to be or not to be. Because the only thing God has not and will not take away from us is the power of choice. <laughs> but life is not restricted to a cradle. <laughs> There's a movement. You're with me. There is a movement. So Job, Job, after he reviewed his exit, come on up, he reviewed his existence. That's the second thing, his existence. What are we doing with the life given to us? Profound question. The breath of God that is in us. What are we doing with it? What are we doing with the moments of consciousness? What are we doing? So Job had a profound understanding of his existence. He separated the matters of life sensibly. Hear him. The Lord give and the Lord has taken away. Job acknowledged the sovereignty of almighty God. No need to question God. God, he is in heaven and God does whatever he please. Oh Lord, whatever he please unto his will. God works things out for the good. God points to one, point one or person to their direction. This is how you're going to go about life. And he's saying, God says to all of us, I'm calling you. I want you to understand that I am your savior. I have something prepared for you. How are you making it through this world? I may ask. Be, be careful. Be careful of the world views. As we continue, <laughs> scripture warns us that that broad way leads to destruction. So be careful. Be careful of the worldview. Because these worldviews have a way of shifting like a shadow. They shift on us. It is uncertain. It's fluid, the worldviews. Be careful of the philosophies of this world. My God, These can be empty at times, you know. They can be. And meaningless at other times. Watch the philosophy. But we must understand my God, and reason out our personal view. <laughs> Who is God? And what is our purpose here on earth? Job elected to serve his God. <laughs> my Lord, 
and to develop relationship with his God. He did not just know about God. <laughs> he knew God and he knew God intimately. <sighs> he knew who he believed and he was persuaded that God is able to bring him through life and to present him fearful and faultless at the final stages of life. He knew that. So from his existence, he then examined his exit. <laughs> ah. And he says, naked I shall depart. He was basically saying, there's nothing that I would have achieved in this world that I can take with me. Absolutely nothing. We leave this world empty handed. All we possess in this life becomes useless to us at death. A man's life, I remind us today, does not consist in the abundance of things we own. No, they don't. All of the achievements, my Lord, they are no longer are applicable. None of them. A full stop is given and the stories of our lives come to an end. Lord. We leave with a eulogy. <laughs> you had one today. The eulogy is the good word. The good word of the person. The day you hear a eulogy and you hear something and they're negative about the person, something wrong. That's not a eulogy. Yeah? It's not. God. It's the good word. The good things about the person. They speak about of our achievements. They speak about the accolades and the, and the certifications. My Lord, all of the beautiful things that happen. We live with a past, though. <laughs> My Lord, it may be a positive one or it had positive influence. <laughs> My Lord, we could live also with a history of hurts. Things that happened to us or things that we did to people. But dearly beloved, we live with a future. Sounds strange, eh? We live with a future after death. Hebrews 9, 27. The scripture says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, it says, but after this, there's judgment. That's the future. It starts there. So having repeated what scripture says, I cannot fail to remind this audience. I cannot fail to remind myself as well. <laughs> oh Lord. That after the exit from this earth, there is an eternity. My Lord. There is an eternity to face. Of course, there are several views about this subject. My Lord. Some people would exclaim, when you're dead, you're dead. That's fine. But the only truth that we have to go on is the truth of the word of God. Word of God. I'm waiting for somebody to bring some other evidence. No one has ever brought any other evidence than what the word of God says. My God. So there's a future to face. So I invite you to listen to the one who never lied. The one who is the way. The one who is the truth, the one who is the life. Listen to him. Listen to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. John documented it for us. When Jesus was teaching in the Gospels, John chapter 5. It's right there for us. Verse 28, reading from the NIV. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus says, do not be amazed at this. For a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice. They will hear. The dead will hear his voice. All dead. Something is going to happen. When God speaks, there must be a response. My God. And they will come out of the grave just like it happened with Lazarus. Jesus went to the mouth of that tomb and said, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus had to understand the tomb. It was descended, so he had to get a ladder or something to come up. 
I don't know how he got up the ladder or not, but one thing I tell you, I can tell you is that he came out of the tomb. But God, wrapped up and tied up, and Jesus said, loose the man. So every voice, every person in the grave will hear the voice of Jesus Christ saying, come out. But listen to this. Jesus is continuing. <laughs> Those who have done good will rise to live. Eternal life, that is. <laughs> and those who have done evil will also arise, but they will be risen to face condemnation. They will be condemned. All the dead one day will be raised. All. <laughs> Some will be raised to life, others to condemnation. I had to repeat that. What a solemn truth for us today. It is that every person who has ever lived or will ever live <laughs> falls, into, falls into one of these two classes. Life or condemnation. And I remind you, God has given all of us the power of choice he comes today and he says no you choose you choose but note our future destiny is shaped by the decisions we make in the now this very moment I would challenge everyone within the hearing of my voice there is no one here who can stand and accurately tell me what's going to happen in the next five minutes. Unless you have special divine revelation from God. We don't know. So Jesus says, look, the action is in the now. I close by saying, today, my Lord, today, at Winston's funeral, remember this, today, the Holy Spirit spoke to us on this day, marked by his death. If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. My God, funeral services, we celebrate the life of the one who has passed. We give respect and honor to the family. We grieve with them. We give them comfort, but also is an opportune time for each and every one of us from the minister back down to say, God, I want you to examine my life. God, I want you to look at me. And then we do a review of our personal life and ask the question, where do I stand with my God? Where do I stand with him? What am I going to do when the party of life is over? What am I going to do? How will it end for me? That's the question God is asking us today. I did not know wisdom personally. I didn't. Never met him. I know his wonderful mother. I know the spirit of his aunt. I know them. I know them. I know the loving people. My God know them and I know that with with me today the desire of their hearts would be that each family member my God we get to know this Jesus that each family member will want to serve him my God remember this day on the day that wisdom Warren Tyrell was buried on that day God spoke to me come on family members I invite you to stand right now and draw close as close as possible as you can to the casket family members My God, Jesus. Wow. Jesus. Come on. 
take a quick glance at each other. Yes, that's a glance. You see this audience that are here with you today? Every one of us will go to our individual homes. You with me? But you all will be left to work things out while we go home. Jesus. Mm. Those moments of silence and solitude remain with you. And as a family, you have to decide how are you, how you all are going to get through this. Going to depend upon Jesus Christ and each other? Oh, Lord. Jesus, and we declare today that the peace of God will be on you. Just bow your heads and take a moment to reflect on life. Reflect on your life. Reflect on family. Family is very important. Important. Come on now. We quarrel with each other. We fight. But we got to learn how to make up. Come on. How to get stronger. In the name of Jesus Christ. On the day of wisdom. Thrills. Funeral. This family was made stronger. Father in God in the name of Jesus. We lift this family before you, O oh God, today. Lord, they are hurting. God, there's a pain that moves, O oh God, in the cavities of their bodies. Jesus, there is a disturbance of spirit. But God, this is why Jesus Christ came into the world. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The anointing of God is upon me to bind up the broken hearted Jesus do something with his family God put your hands around them God comfort them dear Jesus my Lord we are human beings oh God come short and fill we are asking that the hands of God will move upon them touch them deep in their spirit God Holy Spirit minister to every one of them and ripen their hearts oh God to come closer to you bring them oh God into a solid relationship with you that they will be able to say I know that my redeemer lives and at the end at the end I know the God whom I serve will be standing so God work on them Father I pray that you will bring them together as a unit come on now Jesus Bring them together. Everything that is broken, I pray, God, you will mend it. Every disturbance, oh God, will be resolved in the name of Jesus Christ. And that they will use, oh God, the memory. Use the example of the life, oh God, of wisdom, wisdom. Oh God, to come closer and touch each other, oh God, in a very special way. So God, do this for them. Bring them through, oh God, this experience. Oh God, bring them through this night, oh God, this dark night and the many dark nights that will follow. And give them a strength, oh God, to continue in the name of Jesus Christ. So God bless them even now in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Congregation, stand with me. Come on now. Come on now. With our heads bow. Just whisper a prayer for the family. Jesus, whisper a prayer for them. <laughs> My God, thank you, Jesus. Because when we all get to heaven, Jesus, it has to be a day of rejoicing. God says, I am going to wipe away the tears. Come on now. We are going to a place to a destiny where there's no sorrow. Where there's no tears. Come on now. God says, I, I personally will wipe away all tears. My God, start the drying now. Now, Jesus. And give us the hope, which is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may return to your seats. Hallelujah. Uh, as we leave this sanctuary today, there is a sound of hope. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ, there is hope. When we all get to heaven, 
what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Could you kindly stand with us as we do this one? Amen. No disrespect to, I mean, move your body and give God thanks. No disrespect at all. Ah, we have an anticipation today. My excitement is coming our way. <laughs> and we want to begin that heaven right down here. It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again, when I 
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain is a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees and lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you Streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here or through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve Trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for a love so 
someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold Days down here or through There's a place Out there For people like you It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you Why'd you have to leave so soon, yeah? Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you Without feeling much worse I know you're in a better place But it's always gonna hurt Carry on It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you Feeling so cold I'll be waiting right here for you Till the day you're home Carry on Give me all the strength I need To carry on So let the light guide your way Yeah It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here or through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around With your heart on your sleeve Trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold To hold. I believe when your days down here or through, there's a place up there for people like you. It's been a long day without you, my friend. 
And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you again. Why'd you have to leave so soon? Yeah. Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you without feeling much worse. I know you're in a better place, but it's always gonna hurt. Carry on, give me all the strength I need to carry on. It's been a long day without you, my friend. So cold. I'll be waiting right here for you till the day you're home. Carry on. Give me all the strength I need to carry on. So let the light guide your way. Yeah. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you. If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain Is a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you Streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here or through There's a place up there For people like you If 
It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see. You Why'd you have to leave so soon, yeah? Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you Without feeling much worse I know you're in a better place But it's always gonna hurt Carry on It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you Feeling so cold I'll be waiting right here for you Till the day you're home Carry on Give me all the strength I need To carry on So let the light guide your way Yeah
It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you. If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain Is a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your days down here are through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around With your heart on your sleeve if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold to hold I believe when your days down here are through there's a place up there for people like you
It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you. Why'd you have to leave so soon, yeah? Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you without feeling much worse. I know you're in a better place, but it's always gonna hurt. Carry on! It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you How do I breathe without you? I'm feeling so cold I'll be waiting right here for you Till the day you're home Carry on Give me all the strength I need To carry on So let the light guide you It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain Is a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you Streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here through
is a place a bed for people like you if you walk around with your heart on your sleeve and if you're trying to be the change you want to see if you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved there's a place For people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe when your days down here are through There's a place up there for people like you It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again, when I see you Why'd you have to leave so soon, yeah? Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you Without feeling much worse I know you're in a better place But it's always gonna hurt Carry on It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you Feeling so cold I'll be with you again We've come a long way From where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it When I see you again When I see you again
glory, glory to the Father. Glory, glory to the Son. Glory, glory to the Holy Spirit. Glory to the three in one. I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the end, he stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. Myself will see him with my own eyes. I am not another. How my heart earns within me. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and will be changed. Then the saying that is written will come through. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is in sin, and the power of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, from their deeds will follow them, for their deeds will follow them, sorry. We have come now to commit the body of our departed, departed friend to its kindred dust. The Spirit, we live with God, for we know the merciful judge of all the earth to do right. Let us who remain dedicated, let us who remain, sorry, remain dedicated as we dedicate our lives, our love to God, so that we may obtain an abundant influence into the heavenly kingdom. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world the soul of wisdom, Warren Terrell, we now commit his body to the earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. May God be praised. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, God of all mercy, we look to you right now in this moment of sorrow and bereavement. Please, God, comfort the dear ones whose hearts are heavy and sad. Then I'll sing the hymn, Lily of the body. I've found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse, make me fully whole. In sorrow, he's my comfort. In trouble, he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. Taken and all my sorrows born, in him 
temptation, he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken, and all my idols torn from my heart, and now he keeps me by his power. In sorrow, he's my comfort. the morning star the beauty about life is is that we get to experience the love of Jesus Christ and we are in this season right now for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life in return we say this to him my Jesus I love thee I know that thou art mine for thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, it is right now. The hymn, my Jesus, I love thee. My Jesus, I of God be with you and remain with you when peace like a river 
Offendeth my way when sorrow like seas billows roll. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. This is the hymn that will follow. It is well with my soul. My thanks given to God for the life of wisdom. Let us live with the hope that one day we too shall see the King. Time is very short, and we live with the joy of knowing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, shall appear to take his people with him. Our next hymn as we continue to lay our tributes soon and very soon. We are going to see the king.
giving God thanks for the life of wisdom, worrying around. We now pronounce this benediction on you. Now to him who is able to keep you without stumbling or falling and to present you unblemished before the presence of his glory in triumphant joy and exultation. To the one only God, our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, might and dominion and power and authority before all time, now and forevermore. Let the assembly say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, God, for this life. And may he rest in peace. God bless you. Do have a wonderful afternoon. And go in the strength and in the comfort of Almighty God. God bless. It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you Why'd you have to leave so soon, yeah? Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you Without feeling much worse I know you're in a better place But it's always gonna hurt Carry on It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you Feeling so cold I'll be waiting right here for you Till the day you're home Carry on Give me all the strength I need To carry on 
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your days down here are through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around With your heart on your sleeve Trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold to hold I believe when your days down here are through there's a place out there for people like you Keep doing what you do 
purpose there's a place up there for people like you It's been a long day without you, my friend. 